how do we draw the impossible? Impossible not because of the shape of the object, but because there's just so much of the object or objects that the detail becomes overwhelming. This is a really common problem for the artists in nature. Think of a tree and all those leaves. But I've got videos already on drawing trees. In fact, I have a playlist of them. How does drawing the impossible volume, detail of nature work with a field of flowers? How do we draw a tangle and not get tangled up? This video is going to give us five points to focus on as we draw. And these five points will keep us in control of our line work of our drawing. I'm going to detail and demonstrate these five points now as I draw this scene. At the end of the flower drawing, I'm going to show you two streetscape drawings where the same techniques have been used for architecture. And it's really helpful to see these five points in a different context. So don't miss that. But for now, let's start our drawing. The first point, and usually the first thing I do in drawing a scene such as this, is to draw some what I call eye grabbers. We're drawing some aspect of the forms within our scene that we want the viewer to see pretty much immediately. Now, these are really important because these are going to tell the viewer, in essence, what they're looking at. So although there's going to be a lot of lines on our page, we want some of them to be more obvious than others. And we want some of them not just to be more obvious, but to be more identifiable. In fact, to be immediately identifiable because this is giving the viewer the key to what the detail is all about immediately. And exactly what the best eye grabber is depends on our scene. If it's a large tree, it may be the overall shape of the tree and the branches poking through the canopy in different places. But for a scene such as this, which is a massive detail that's all very similar, what we want to do is to separate some of the detail out and draw it with great clarity. And we draw it with clarity both by drawing it in detail, probably by positioning it somewhere down the front so that it can be larger, and also by the line work we put around it, either to give it space by creating blankness around it, or by giving it definition by putting strong tonal contrast around it. Light or dark, depending whether our shape is light or dark, it doesn't matter which way it goes, it's the contrast to make the shape, to make the form pop out and give an immediate story to the viewer as to what they're looking at. Now in this case, obviously the eye grabbers are going to be some carefully drawn flowers. Now these are cosmos, which is a daisy-like looking flower. And the thing to remember is that how they look depends on what angle we're viewing the flower head from. If we're side on, it's going to be a very shallow effect. If we're looking straight down on it, it's going to be a roughly circular effect. And of course, for most of our flowers, we're looking at some sort of angle and it's, so it's going to be something in between. So you can see me just starting by drawing these flower heads, these eye grabbers, and I'm positioning them around the paper because another important thing is to cover a fair bit of the detail all at once. We don't want to get bogged down in one part of the detail yet because it's a bit like drawing values with hatching. We don't really know what we want to put until we see what we've put elsewhere. So we try and create a fair bit at once. This isn't one of the five points, it's just a good point. So the second thing though we do want to do is we need to create what I think of as fire breaks. Now fire breaks um, Fire breaks is a term used in Australian bushfire fighting where we backburn and create spots where the fire can't travel. But I use it in drawing to create spots where the eye can easily run, where, where in effect we get movement in the tangle because that means I'm now directing my viewer and I'm giving them places to, if you like, rest 
and to travel without being overwhelmed. Now, we can create fire breaks in different ways, or if you like, pathways for the eyes. Now here, I'm creating them by using shadow. So I'm doing lots of hatchwork close together to indicate the darker spots where we can see down closer towards the ground, past the very feathery leaves. And so these shadows, when they all join up, become in effect a line of sorts that, that we can follow. And it also divides all of this detail of other line work into, if you like, more digestible pieces. So it, it, it helps the eye to travel and to, and to see over the whole thing and not to be overwhelmed, but to have a sense of there are parts now that are making up the whole. And we can view the parts with a little more sense of control and stay focused in one area more because it's surrounded by this fire trail. And because therefore it encourages me to, to linger slightly, it helps me get more meaning from just that one point. But it's still important that as we create the fire breaks, that we make sure we accentuate the eye grabbers as well. Now we're also doing line work for mass effect, and that's our third point. We need to capture some essence of form. And the form that we catch and the way we capture it may also change with distance. And so it's good that I've mentioned this point as I've just switched from a 0 0.3 to a 0 0.2 millimeter pen. So now I'm drawing with a finer line. And as well as drawing with a finer line, I'm actually drawing, if you like, the mass detail, which is the bits in between the flower heads and the stems. I'm drawing the mass detail differently. I've changed my technique. Because another way we create, if you like, different areas of our drawing that make it easier to take in is to shift our line work with distance. Because things do look different when they're further away. The mass of leaves down the front looks very different to the mass of leaves in the background. If we stop thinking, the mass of flowers in the front looks very different to the mass of flowers in the background if we stop thinking of, of flowers and actually just start to look at the actual forms. And so. The way I capture the mass effect of the flowers in the distance is different and therefore I want a different way of making marks. And I also want a different density of marks because one of the way we create a sense of depth is to have less detail as we go further back because that mimics what happens in life. Now my fourth point for not being overwhelmed with detail is to be aware of negative space. Now I'm using negative space now to define the top edge of the flowers. Behind the flowers, there is some distance to something else which is in shadow. So I want to take advantage of that to use the shadow to create a stronger sense of the silhouette of these flowers. Now I also use negative space at the very start to help define the eye grabbers. So that wasn't the silhouette of the whole form, but it was the silhouette of very important individual parts of it. So negative space controlling the shadows is very helpful for injecting heightened detail and readily identifiable detail into our drawing. I'm still keeping my lines though up here in the back, in the top, lighter and looser because again that reflects the distance, the sense of scale better. And silhouette edges is the fifth point that we need to consider. We must always be aware of silhouette edges because they convey a lot more information. And I'm aware of my silhouette edges up at the top here, but also down the sides of my drawing. Because while we don't look immediately to the sides, we do get a sense when we look at particularly this right hand side of overhanging flowers. And it seems quite easy to recognize them as, as flowers and stems and little bits of fine feathery leaf matter. So edges, silhouettes are really important. But 
again, equally important up the top. So on this top line I'm doing now, there's two of these points, negative spaces and silhouette edges being worked on. And now I'm going back looking at the mass effect line work for the further back part, if you like the upper third of my drawing. And I have a heavier, more intense style of mass effect line work for the lower two thirds of the drawing, which is a lot closer to us. And you see that I'm just going now back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, because as I said earlier, we can't complete any one part. We want to be, in a sense, completing the whole scene all at once. And at this point, I'm looking back for a moment and, and just reading the values across the whole drawing and thinking, do I need to darken any individual parts just to give a nicer balance of lighter and darker values without messing up, hopefully, my fire breaks, my pathways? because I don't want to lose the pathways that I've established to help the eye travel around. And I don't want to take the eye too far from that near center flower, which is kind of, if you like, the anchoring point probably of identifying what this is about and navigating it and understanding it. Now I just work at the corners and the edges a bit more because by this stage they're often a little neglected because we've been more focused on the centre. So again, this isn't a point, but don't, don't neglect the corners. Don't overwork them because we don't want them to be a focus of attention. But still, we need to keep them in balance and have a sense of they have been finished. They do go with the rest of the drawing, not that we simply forgot to get back to that corner. These are all the things I'm, I'm just finishing to do now. And in a moment, we'll look to see how this can be applied to architecture. What do you think? I hope these five points have helped to demystify the challenge of drawing the immense complexity of detail that can be overwhelming where we can get lost and to establish some identifiable form in our line work. But what happens if we're not looking at nature? And if you'd like to see how this works with trees, then have a look at my How to Draw Trees playlist where this method of drawing, if you like, the effect of the detail rather than the detail is demonstrated, I think, quite clearly. But what happens with non-natural subjects that are very complicated? What about architecture? Here are two scenes that really have quite a lot of complexity in this first one, it's as much the architectural detail. In this one, simpler buildings, but because the street goes on for so long, the, if you like, compressed detail becomes greater and greater. So how do we use the five points for capturing impossible detail in architecture? I actually have videos based on each of these drawings, but let me just show you quickly what it meant for me in practice. Because we can see these five points in these architectural examples. There are eye grabbers that help the viewer to really readily identify what we're looking at. In this first one, it's more this architectural detail in here, which is also amongst the more interesting detail. But it definitely says this is a building really quickly. In this scene, it's again this closer section of building, but it takes in the car and the tree, and it says, I think, quite happily, this is the edge of a building on a street. These street signs as well very quickly and easily convey the information we're looking up a street. So the eye grabbers are in both drawings. And often, particularly in streetscapes, our fire breaks, our pathways for the eyes are actually created by the perspective angles. And particularly if we look in this second drawing, we can see these are almost like pathways that the eye is drawn along, which takes us into our scene and helps give some structure. But even in this first drawing where the perspective angles don't line up in great long lines across our facade, we do get these perspective lines that do create a general pattern that generally draws the eye this way and also create, if you like, little rooms of less detail 
that we can take one by one that creates some form, some order in what otherwise could be a mess of complexity. Now, we need to work on our line work to capture the effect of the architecture. We actually have to also use line work to capture the effect of the trees that we have in both of these scenes, a bare tree and a tree in full leaf. But by having some line work darker, heavier, expressing more detail than others, is a form of separation. We tend to look at this first and then the eye moves and we might look at this, but we're not looking at this and this at the same time. The different weight of lines has created a division and we go from here to here and the same thing happens here. We'll naturally go to the darker, heavier lines and contrast into the eye grabbers first. And we have a different way of creating, of representing the reality of the architecture up here. A lot more very close together lines, very lightly drawn, very loosely drawn. We have different mark making up here and that helps create separation from here and here. Gives us different parts to focus on one by one, which helps us to navigate what could otherwise be a mass of complex lines. Now we need to be aware of negative spaces and with buildings, I think negative spaces most obviously work with the windows where we actually define the window shape and the interior as well as the architectural elements around the window through the negative space of the shadows of the rooms behind. And we can particularly see that here where even blinds are suggested and sometimes furniture in the room is suggested by our hatchwork. And silhouette edges are very important in drawings and we often see those most distinctively along the roof line. And so here, this dome and these turrets are really important in conveying a sense of not just that these are buildings, but these are fancy buildings. Now, this street has buildings of a more day-to-day -day variety. But even so, we want to capture the sense of the gabled fronts and the chimneys and the dormer windows because that's very important, both as a fact of interest, but also for conveying the sort of street, the sort of architecture, the sort of city, in fact, this may be. And if you couldn't guess, London, Ghent. So these five principles don't just apply to natural scenes, they apply to architecture as well. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I realise this is a similar subject and drawing to one I did earlier but partly because I gave away that drawing and my wife was a bit sad that she didn't have a flower drawing. So I wanted to draw another one, but I felt I could organize the information in that video more helpfully because this technique is probably one of the most fundamental elements defining my drawing style and my drawing approach, defining both my drawing style and my thinking about drawing and how we draw. It really is right down there in the foundation of my drawing method. So I hope this has helped clarify it even more for you. Of course, you'll find these flowers on my community page if you want to try and draw them yourself. And I really can recommend that you try it. But hey, whatever you're drawing and however you're drawing it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.